USB hacking, Linux on the move, Linux on a CD, DVD or a USB drive. Now how many times have you actually been found yourself in situations wherein you are using a computer, it could be a Windows computer and there are a lot of restrictions on that computer. You cannot access a registry, you cannot access certain important data files, you cannot access maybe uh, important applications either. And a lot of times in internet cafes, maybe like the one that you are sitting in right now, or maybe in your college, or maybe in an organization, you are likely to find such restrictions. So what if you land up in a situation like this? wherein you are in any of these locations or situations that I just described. Now what if you actually wanted to somehow use a technique or a tool or a method to actually access files or access applications or the registry on the local Microsoft Windows computer. Now this is where something known as Nopix comes in. Nopix is basically a complete Linux distribution that can run directly. Listen to this carefully. It's a complete Linux distribution that can run directly from a CD, DVD or maybe even a tiny USB drive. Now this Nopix Linux distribution was actually originally developed by somebody called Klaus Nopper. You can actually now order your own copy of Nopix on a CD for free from their website or you can also download the entire distribution onto your computer through the internet from the website which is nopix.net. And the best part about this particular Linux distribution is that it actually has all the best parts of the Unix operating system from a hacker's perspective. So you have access to all the important Unix utilities, Unix commands, Unix compilers and the shell prompt of course. So I urge all of you to actually go to the website and download your own version of Nopix as quickly as possible. If I am not mistaken, the version which runs on a DVD or a CD is around 1.2 or 1.4 GB and the version that runs on a USB drive is only around 600 or 700 megabytes. So on a fast connection within less than maybe 10 to 12 hours, you should be able to download your own version of Nopix. Now once you have downloaded this, this version onto your computer or once you have ordered that CD and it arrives at your home, secondly you got to make sure that you go through the documentation, the FAQs and other reading material in the help section or the man section of the CD or DVD or on the website for more information on installation, booting, troubleshooting and other important detailed matters. Because installing Nopix is sort of tricky especially if you want to install it on a USB drive. So I highly recommend, I'm sort of repeating this only to ensure that all of you actually follow this. Make, make sure, definitely make sure that you go through all the documentation before you actually attempt to install Nopix on your USB or a CD or a DVD drive. Now let's assume that you have gone through the entire installation process successfully. What do you need to do next? So imagine a scenario, I'll just sort of quickly refresh your memory, wherein either your operating system has completely crashed and you are not able to access data applications or the registry on it. Or more interestingly, your system has security restrictions wherein you are not allowed to or you are blocked from accessing data applications or the Windows registry on it. What do you need to do to access that data? All you need to do is you need to take your Nopix USB or the Nopix CD, put it into the CD drive or connect it to the USB port, restart the computer assuming that uh, it's on. If it's already switched off, then you just need to start the computer. You need to go into the BIOS of the computer. Usually it's, you can enter the BIOS by simply uh, pressing the F1 key or maybe the escape key, but it all varies from 
from computer to computer. All you need to do is, as soon as your computer boots, look for the BIOS welcome splash screen and you'll see a message which gives you information on how you can access the BIOS. Once you access the BIOS, you can actually change the settings and boot from the CD-ROM or boot from the USB drive. Now once you boot from the CD-ROM or USB drive, you will automatically have booted into the NOPIX operating system. And once you have started the NOPIX operating system, you can then use that particular operating system to access the Windows partition and access important files or access the Windows registry or maybe access important applications even though normally you don't have restrictions or you don't have any access or, or permissions to access that important sensitive data. That's it. So you can easily, like it has been mentioned in step 3, you can easily access the files that you want on the Windows partition once you are booted into the Nopix Linux distribution. If you look at the screen, you will actually see an example of what the Nopix operating system looks like. It looks very easy to use, it looks very attractive and definitely Nopix happens to be one of my personal all time favorite operating systems simply because it's so mobile and simply because it can be used for a lot of interesting hacks and of course it, it looks very good, it works quite well as well. Now other than the Nopix Linux distribution, there are plenty of other Linux distributions also that can be run on a CD, DVD or a USB drive. Let me quickly give you examples of few of them which are extremely powerful and extremely popular as well. Ubuntu is a great Linux distribution which is available on its official website as a free download. It can again, there are versions which can actually run on a USB or a CD or a DVD. Similarly, PC Linux OS is another great example of Linux distribution that runs on a USB or a DVD or a CD-ROM as well. This technique sort of gave you an example as to how you can actually access the restricted data on the Windows partition of your computer. Now sometimes in order to access the restricted data or in order to execute commands on a restricted computer, all you need is a USB. Now USB hacking has actually become extremely common and extremely popular because what happens in USB hacking is even though your computer maybe does not allow you to install applications. So say for example, let me actually give an example which makes things a lot clearer. Say you are sitting in a internet cafe or in a college computer or an organization computer and you want to actually execute the ping command or run nmap. Normally when you try to install nmap, you are not able to install it on your computer because your system administrator has restricted access on installation of new applications. Similarly, if you go to the command line prompt, sometimes the MS-DOS prompt has already been restricted on your computer. And even if MS-DOS has not been restricted, when you actually try to type ping, follow or tracer or any of the other command utilities, you will find that access to those utilities has been blocked. Now the answer to this problem is the USB drive. All you need to do instead is install nmap on your USB drive using some other computer. So in other words, if this computer is restricted, you need to walk up to another computer, connect your USB, download as many commands or applications or utilities you want and you come back to the restricted computer, connect your USB and unfortunately or fortunately on most computers, USB drives are always enabled. So as soon as you put in your USB drive, you will be able to access all the applications that you had copied onto the USB drive earlier. In fact, you will be very surprised, but if you go to Google and search for nmap followed by USB, nmap actually has a variation or a version that has been specially designed for a USB drive. So you can actually install absolutely any sort of software you want on the USB drive, connect it to the restricted computer. And now, using the restricted computer, you can access the USB drive and actually execute all the applications 
all the commands, all the hacking tools that have been copied onto it. So say for example, if you want to maybe run a password cracker, you can copy it onto a USB drive connected to the restricted computer. If you want to run Nmap from your office computer or your college computer, just copy Nmap onto this USB, plug it in. Similarly, you can copy uh, the ping command, trace route, port scanners, OS detection tools, packet sniffers, key loggers, trojans, DOS attack tools, buffer overflow tools, input validation tools, SQL injection tools, scanners, absolutely any sort of software onto a USB drive and on most occasions you can actually use those uh, softwares or execute those applications even on a restricted computer. So USB hacking is the latest hot technique that a lot of the criminals worldwide are sort of implementing. Not only is USB hacking popular as far as executing or installing stuff on, on the restricted computer is concerned, but nowadays a lot of thieves are actually using USB drives to steal important intellectual property, steal important sensitive data from corporations. Because say for example, you could be a Wipro or an ICIC, a bank or some important government organization and you might actually put all the restrictions on all systems that you have. However, what is stopping an employee from using USB drive, plugging it in, copying data onto the USB drive, and this US, small USB drive can actually be hidden in a lot of very innovative places within the human body, and you can actually walk out from the premises or the campus of the organization that you're working for, and this information can actually be sold to a competitor, to the government, or maybe to even the mafia as far as uh, criminals are concerned. So USB hacking is extremely, extremely dangerous. And a very good recommendation that I have for everybody, all organizations and system administrators is, you need to either disable all USB drives, or there are a lot of softwares available on the internet which actually monitor all activity that happens on the USB drive. So if you go to google.com and search for USB monitor or USB security, you will see so many different softwares that can be actually downloaded or bought and implemented across your entire organization. And such softwares can actually help you prevent misuse of the USB port. When I say misuse, I'm of course referring to the software can actually be used to record all files that are being copied from the computer to the USB or from the USB to the computer. At the same time, all those so security software can also be used to monitor what applications are being run from the USB drive, what files are being opened, and so on. So you know exactly what your employees, what your students, or what your kids are doing on your computer, or, or of course, the, I'm assuming that your employees or your kids or your college students are your criminals or your enemies in this case. And you can actually keep a track of all the USB activities and countermeasures, implement solutions, and sort of even catch the bad guy using the USB security softwares available on the internet.